In order to develop a uh, technique for transforming the components of the stress tensor, I'm going to use a method known as the traction vector method, and this will allow me to leverage the information or the methods that we have developed for transforming vectors from one coordinate frame to another. So the setup uh, I want to consider is I have a coordinate frame x, y, and a second coordinate frame x prime, y prime, and the relative angle between the x axes is theta and I'm looking at a point P where I know what the stresses are at this point. So I know the two normal stresses in the x and the y directions, and I know the shear stress in the xy plane. So that's given, that's the known information, and what I'd like to do is develop a transformation rule that allows me to figure out what the stress components are in the prime coordinate system. So knowing the stresses in the xy coordinate system, what are the normal stresses in the x prime direction and in the y prime directions and what are the shear stresses in the x prime y prime frame so that's the question that i'd like to answer so the similar to the question that we had before where we knew the force components in the x y coordinate system and we wanted to develop a relationship for the forces in the x prime y prime coordinate system okay now the thing to remember about the components of the stresses are that the normal stresses are the the normal components of the tractions on the planes whose normal vectors are in the coordinate direction. So if I take the plane in the x prime coordinate direction, the normal component of the traction on that plane will be sigma x prime x prime. And if I take the y prime coordinate uh, plane, so I take the plane whose normal is in the y prime direction, then the normal stress on that plane will be sigma y prime y prime. And then the shears, likewise, are the shear stresses on those planes. So the shear stress or the traction component parallel to the plane whose normal is Ex prime will be sigma x prime y prime. And likewise, the traction component parallel to the plane whose normal is Ey prime will be sigma y prime x prime. So that's the setup that we had from earlier in, in the lecture series. And I like to use this, this fact to help me determine uh, the components of in the prime coordinate system in terms of those in the non-prime coordinate system. So let's go ahead and consider my same body, same point, and now look at the plane whose normal is in the EX prime direction. On this plane at the point P, there's going to be a traction, and the traction vector is T, and it's equal to sigma transpose multiplied into EX prime. And if I expand that out a little bit, Sigma transpose is the matrix, sigma xx, sigma yy on the diagonal, and because it's transpose, I'll have a sigma yx here and a sigma xy here. Now, ex prime is the unit vector in the x prime direction. So just from the geometry of the figure, I have this expression here, cosine theta sine theta for that vector. And everything here in this matrix and in this vector, they're all represented relative to the xy coordinate frame. So I can execute this matrix vector product, and I'll end up with this vector here. And this vector here is nothing but the components of the traction vector with respect to the x direction and the y direction. Okay, so now I have an expression for the traction vector on a plane whose normal is in the ex prime direction, but it's represented relative to an xy coordinate frame. And if I want, I can kind of collapse this down to make this a bit more explicit. I have the x component of the traction vector, so that multiplies the x unit vector. So there's ex. And I have the y component of the traction vector, and that multiplies ey. So ey is the unit vector in the y coordinate direction. So now I have a vector. And I can think of transforming this vector, and that's actually going to allow me to come to a relationship that connects sigma xx, sigma yx, sigma xy, and sigma yy to the components of the stress in the x prime, y prime coordinate frame. Uh, one thing to remember too about the shear stress is I will always have sigma xy is equal to sigma yx, but I'll write them as separate quantities just to kind of keep track of where things are, but they're always numerically the same. And likewise, sigma x prime y prime is always equal to sigma y prime x prime. So that's something to keep in mind also.
Okay, so let's go ahead and, and see what happens if we try and transform the traction vector and see what we can extract out of uh, that bit of information. So let's go ahead and first recall our relationship here, So, which tells us that we have a traction vector. And if I dot it this time now with EX prime, well, that's going to give me the normal component of T. And the normal component of T to that plane is going to be sigma X prime X prime. But I have an, my expression for t is in the x and the y frame. So this is how I'm going to be able to relate things together, is that I'm going to use uh, two representations of the traction vector like we did when we transformed forces. So if I plug in for my traction vector in terms of the xy coordinate frame, then I end up with this relationship that says that the x component times the cosine of theta plus the y component times the sine of theta is going to give me sigma x prime x prime, which is the normal component of the, st of the stresses on the x prime frame, in the x prime frame, yeah. OK, so I can plug in for tx and ty, and I can expand out, and I can rearrange terms, and I come to my first transformation law. It looks a lot more complicated than what I had with vectors, but it's exactly a transformation law. So it tells me what the stress components in one, one frame are in terms of the stress components in the other frame and making use of the relative angle between the two coordinate frames. So we get a very much more complex looking expression, but we have a transformation law. If I look at the y prime component of the traction, so remember again I'm looking at the traction on the surface whose normal is x prime, ex prime. If I dot it now with ey prime, I'll get the, the parallel component, and that's just no, nothing other than sigma x prime y prime. So I can expand out for t. I'll expand out for t in terms of the xy coordinate frame. And now I can go ahead and take the dot products and make use of the geometry of the relationships between the x, x prime, y, y prime axes. And I again come up with an expression that tells me what the stresses, this time the shear stresses in one coordinate frame are, in terms of the stresses in the original coordinate frame, and the angle between the two coordinate frames. So that's the transformation rule for the stresses. Again, it's a seemingly complex looking relationship. Now, that allows us to determine what sigma x prime x prime is, so the normal stress in the x prime direction and what the shear in the system is, but we don't yet have an expression for the normal stress in the y prime direction. Now, we're going to have to do something different to be able to get that, because recall that the traction vector that I've been working with here is the traction on the plane whose normal is in the x prime direction. And the components of the traction on the, the x prime face, as we had over here, those involve sigma x prime x prime and sigma x prime y prime. If I want to be able to figure out what sigma y prime y prime is, I'm going to use a section cut whose normal is in the y prime direction. That will make it a little bit easier. In fact, it will make it possible. So let me go ahead and look at the plane whose normal is in the y prime direction. I'll look at the traction vector here. So this traction vector here is now sigma transpose ey prime. So it's different from the one I've been using so far. And if I take the dot product of that traction vector with ey prime, then I'm going to be able to determine what sigma y prime y prime is. So ey prime is minus cosine theta, or minus sine theta cosine theta, times the transpose of the stress times ey prime. So I can multiply this all out. And when I take that dot product on the left hand side, I end up with sigma y prime y prime. And on the right-hand side, I end up with a transformation expression. I have the stresses, the normal stresses in the x and the y directions, and I have the shear stress, x, y, and then I have the relative angle between the two coordinate frames uh, sitting in here in terms of these trigonometric functions. So this gives me the transformation rule for the two normal stresses, in the x prime and the y prime direction, and the transformation rule for the shear stresses in the system. So, and the thing that we made use of was this concept of how we transform vectors by taking dot products with the different coordinate 
directions and using different representations for the vectors themselves. Uh, one thing to note is that we can rewrite uh, these relationships into sort of a matrix matrix form here where I have the stresses in the xy frame and I have the stresses in the x prime y prime frame and sitting here again are these rotation matrices that execute the transformation. So this is just an unwrapping of the relationship that we derived on the previous uh, slide there. Um, and if you want, you can kind of think of this in a more abstract way. We have the stresses in the xy frame, or sorry, the x prime y prime frame, and they're equal to the stresses in the xy frame where you pre and post multiply the matrix by the rotation matrix. So you have the rotation matrix on the front side, and you have the transpose of the rotation matrix on the back side. But it's the same rotation matrix that we had when we were transforming vectors. So this is maybe a, a somewhat easier way to remember the complete transformation rule is ju you just multiply the stress on the front and the back by the rotation and it's transpose. Uh, one thing to note is that these relationships are often written using the half angle form of the relationship. So if you look back to what we had before, we we have all these squares of trigonometric functions or products of trigonometric functions sitting in here. And so you can use the half angle formulas to uh, convert these uh, expressions into a form that's often seen. So, And they're given to us in terms of the mean stress, so sigma m, which is just the average of the two normal stresses, and then uh, the half the difference uh, of the, the two normal stresses. And if you do that and you you plug it in and kind of rearrange things, you get this sort of set of compact relationships here for the two normal stresses and for the shear stress. And they kind of have a pattern to them, so it's also possible to kind of memorize uh, this form of the equation. So I tend to prefer this one. It's uh, even simpler to remember. Though, of course, one can just look these up in a book, too. But it, it's good to also try and uh, have some intrinsic feeling for what they are so you don't always have to look things up. Um, one last set of remarks here about the transformations is when you do these there are a lot of numerical calculations that go on and there's it's nice to have ways of checking them and there are there's this there's a concept uh, for tensors which is known as invariance and these are quantities that don't change when you change coordinate frames and the first if you're looking at a a 2d problem in two dimensions, so you have a, a two by two for your stress uh, tensor. Uh, the first invariant is known as the, the trace, and the trace is just the sum of the diagonal. And so you have that if you sum the diagonal in one coordinate frame, it's actually equal to the sum of the diagonal in the second coordinate frame. So it's a quick way to check whether you've made a mistake with your calculation. The second invariant that appears in a two dimensional problem is known as the determinant. So the determinant is the product of the diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals. And so that's a quantity also that doesn't change. It's invariant with respect to the coordinate frame. So you can check those two numbers to determine whether uh, you've made an error in your calculation. So it's kind of a double check uh, methodology. And the variants are also useful for other things too. Uh, when you're in three dimensions, there are three invariants. You have a three by three matrix for the stress tensor. And the first invariant is, is the trace. So it's the sum of the diagonal. Now there's a sigma ZZ. The second variant changes. It has this form. It's one half the trace squared minus the trace of the square. So you have to square the stress tensor and then take its trace here to be able to calculate the second term here. But this is the second invariant. And then in 3D, the third invariant is the determinant of the 3 by 3 stress matrix or tensor.